The Sukhoi Su-30MKI has been the backbone of the Indian Air Force for nearly two decades. This large, twin-engine, twin-seat fighter was once considered one of the most versatile aircraft in South Asia. With its powerful thrust vectoring engines, impressive range, and ability to carry a heavy weapons load, it provided India with a reliable platform for both air dominance and long-range strike missions. But as air combat technologies evolve, even a proven machine like the Su-30M KI needs to adapt. Rivals are deploying advanced stealth fighters, modern radars, electronic warfare suites, and long-range precision missiles. Against this backdrop, India has long planned what is now known as the Super Sukhoi Upgrade, a deep modernization of its Su-30 fleets. The idea behind the Super Sukhoi is straightforward. Keep the proven airframe, but transform its brain, eyes, and fists. Replace the old Russian subsystems with modern sensors and avionics, integrate new weapons, strengthen survivability, and above all, inject indigenous technology wherever possible. On paper, this looks like a simple upgrade. In reality, it is a massive undertaking that demands careful engineering, complex integration, and above all, patience. So, where is the Super Sukhoi project today? Why has it taken so long to begin? And what exactly will India put inside its upgraded flankers? The program began as discussions more than a decade ago, but it gathered serious momentum only in the past three years. By 2023 and 2024, approvals and contracts were being cleared for critical subsystems, especially engines and avionics. By 2025, the first serious signs of integration work were visible. HAL, DRDO, and the Indian Air Force had agreed on the basic roadmap. The goal is not to build an entirely new aircraft, but to transform around 150 Su-30 MK is into modern Super Sukhois that can fly and fight effectively into the 2040s. The centerpiece of the upgrade is the radar. The Su-30 MK I currently uses the Russian N0 11M bars passive electronically scanned array, which, while impressive in its time, now lags behind modern active radars. India wants to replace this with an AESA, an active electronically scanned array. ESA radars are the heart of fifth-generation fighters, offering longer detection ranges, faster beam steering, resistance to jamming, and the ability to track multiple targets simultaneously. India's Defense Research and Development Organization has been developing its own AESA under the UTOM family. Variants of UTOM are already flying on the Tejas platform and an enlarged, more powerful version sometimes referred to as Virapaksha in reports, is being readied for the Su-30. If UTAM ASA is successfully integrated, it will mark a major leap in indigenous avionics and reduce dependence on foreign suppliers. However, radar integration is no simple matter. The Su-30's nose cone, cooling systems and power supply all need modifications. The new radar must also be harmonized with the aircraft's mission computers and weapons. These are not tasks that can be rushed, and they explain why the radar piece alone is taking time. Equally important is electronic warfare. Modern battles are not only about who sees first, but who survives the electronic storm of jammers, radars, and incoming missiles. The Super Sukhoi upgrade envisions a complete overhaul of the self-protection suite. New radar warning receivers, missile approach warning systems, expendable decoys, and advanced electronic attack pods. DRGO is pushing to field an indigenous electronic warfare suite, but here again, timelines are tight. Developing and certifying an entire EW architecture is among the most demanding tasks in fighter modernization. If indigenous systems are not fully mature by mid-decade, India may choose hybrid solutions, mixing domestic units with proven foreign pods until its own suite reaches readiness. Then comes the weapons. A modern fighter without modern weapons is like a sword with no edge. The Su-30 MK I already carries a wide range of munitions, but the Super Sukhoi vision is to give it the longest reach possible. The Astra family of beyond visual range missiles is central to this. Astra MK1 has entered service, but the real game changers are Astra MK2 and MK3. With ranges exceeding 150 to 300 kilometers, these will allow the upgraded Su-30 to engage targets long before being threatened itself. Integrating them means modifying pylons, flight testing for separation safety, and writing new fire control software. For strike missions, the aircraft will continue to field the BrahMos missile, but an extended range version, the BrahMos ER, is expected to feature prominently. Fitting such a heavy cruise missile onto a fighter requires not just structural clearance, 
but also mission computer integration, autopilot coupling, and real-world flight trials. The Super Sukhoi is designed to handle this workload, turning it into a long-range strike asset with standoff capabilities unmatched in the region. The question of engines is equally important. The Su-30M Ki fleet relies on the Russian AL-31 FP turbofan. While powerful, the supply chain has often been vulnerable to delays, sanctions, and geopolitical turbulence. In 2024, India cleared new contracts for overhauls and production under license, ensuring a steady pipeline of engines and spares. For now, the aircraft will continue with upgraded AL-31 variants, assembled and maintained in India. Indigenous alternatives remain a long-term dream rather than a near-term reality. Inside the cockpit, the pilots of the Super Sukhoi can expect a more modern environment. The old displays and mission computers are slated for replacement with indigenous processors, improved avionics, helmet-mounted queuing, and enhanced data links for network-centric warfare. These changes may not grab headlines like a new missile or radar, but they fundamentally change how crews fight. A better interface, faster mission computers, and real-time connectivity with ground stations and other fighters can mean the difference between victory and defeat in contested airspace. But if all these upgrades are so important, why has the project been slow? The answer lies in the brutal realities of defense modernization. Integration is enormously complex. Each new system must work with the others without overloading the aircraft's power and cooling margins. Certification requires hundreds of flight hours under varied conditions, from high-altitude cold weather to humid sea-level operations. Each test must be documented and cleared, because mistakes in integration can mean fatal consequences in combat. On top of that, India is determined to use indigenous components wherever possible. This policy reduces long-term dependency, but it also introduces delays. Domestic radars and EW suites need years of development, testing, and refinement before they can replace imported options. The balancing act is difficult, rushing risks fielding immature technology, while waiting too long risks fielding obsolescent fighters. Geopolitics has added more friction. The Su-30 MKI is still, at its heart, a Russian design. Sanctions, supply disruptions, and Russia's own wartime demands have complicated the flow of spares and technical assistance. India has responded by ramping up local manufacturing, developing alternative supply chains, and investing in reverse engineering where possible. This makes the program more sustainable in the long run, but also slows immediate timelines. Not only upgrading Su-30s. It is simultaneously funding Tejas MK-1A, planning for Tejas MK-2, investing in the fifth-generation AMCA project, pursuing a joint engine program, buying Rafales and modernizing naval aviation. The Super Sukhoi is important, but it competes for budget and industrial capacity with many other headline programs. So will India really field a Super Sukhoi by 2026? The honest answer is, partially. By 2026, we can expect to see prototype SU-30MK is fitted with some indigenous components, perhaps an ASA radar on test beds, Astra missiles in advanced integration, and electronic warfare pods undergoing evaluation. The first squadrons may begin receiving upgraded aircraft in limited numbers. But a fleet-wide rollout, with every Su-30MKI converted into a fully loaded Super Sukhoi, will take longer. Most realistic assessments point to phased inductions through the late 2020s. Think of 2026 not as the finish line, but as the start of visible progress. The first upgraded aircraft will take to the skies, and each year after, more squadrons will cycle through depots to receive their upgrades. By 2030, if all goes to plan, the Indian Air Force could operate a large fleet of Super Sukhois equipped with ASA radars, long-range missiles, standoff strike weapons, and modern self-protection systems. The stakes are high. If India succeeds, it will extend the relevance of its Su-30M Ki fleet well into the 2040s. The aircraft will remain a credible deterrent even against stealth fighters, thanks to modern sensors, data links, and long-range missiles. The program will also serve as a bridge, buying time until the AMCA and other indigenous fighters arrive in strength. And perhaps most importantly, it will mark a milestone in self-reliance, showing that India can take a complex foreign platform and transform it with its own technology. But challenges remain. The radar must mature, the electronic warfare suite must prove itself in trials, and the weapons must clear their envelopes. The process will be slow, technical, and at times frustrating. 
Yet, if history is a guide, India has often advanced its aerospace capabilities through such incremental but determined steps. The Super Sukhoi, then, is not just an upgrade. It is a test of India's ability to balance ambition with realism, indigenous innovation with imported certainty, and urgent operational needs with long-term strategy. By 2026 and 27, the world will begin to see glimpses of this transformation. By the end of the decade, we will know if the Super Sukhoi truly lives up to its name.